Here's a little thought problem which has uh, bedeviled, if not uh, confounded, uh, many an analysis. Uh, consider, if you will, a uh, price series across, uh, say, uh, two periods. That is to say, one, two, three prices. We always start at time zero. And it could go from 10 to 11, then $10. Or maybe it went from uh, 10 to 9 to $10, and we wound up where we started. Or did we? Consider, if you will, that uh, going upwards from 10 to 11, we gain 10%, and from 11 back to 10, and watch it, we lose 9.1%. Whereas going from 10 to $9, we uh, lose 10%, and going from 9 to 10, Again, watch it, we gain 11.1%. So if we were to do an arithmetic mean computation across these, and again, watch it, the gain is not canceled by a loss, but a gain is added to another gain. Uh, before going any further, we better stop for some conventional notation and terminology. A uh, return series is the result of the previous price being divided into a later price, plus any income, which uh, we're not uh, doing here. And one computes the total return, that's principal and interest, uh, which by convention is usually put into a net return or yield basis. But they usually don't uh, change the uh, notation, even though they're usually talking about yield but they call it return. And the arithmetic mean is just uh, adding up uh, these uh, sequential returns, either as decimals or as percents, and either as yields or total returns. And uh, we divide by the number of cases, which is the same thing as counting the probability of each day as being one over the total number of days in the series. And if one were to compute the geometric or compounded uh, return, uh, one would uh, note that here, only as a decimal on the net yield would be appropriate in this computation. And we multiply them together. That's what that uh, capital pi means the product of. And uh, we get the series at the end compounded. And we should note that the uh, terminal value is a uh, result of possible paths of differing returns that will give us the same terminal amount and give us the same geometric mean. Hmm. But one person says the yield is zero geometrically and the other one says it is plus one half percent and that's arithmetic. Oh, now what am I going to do? Well, never fear, Dr. C is here. Let's look at that time series again, and you'll notice we've expanded it a bit, as we should have at the beginning. A little trick here, if you will, of pedagogic ledger darman. Say what? Well, what it means is that this is a mistake that easily a practitioner could have made using real data. We went from uh, 10 to 11, gain of 10%, back down from... Well, wait a minute, 10% on 11 would be taking us down 10% to $9.90. Just likewise, we could have gone upward and up again, $10, uh, $11, uh, $12.10, not shown here for a third period, $13.31. We also could have gone downward and then back upward. Uh, again, at 10%, that would have gone to $9.90. And again, downward and downward again is a fourth possible case. That'd be uh, down 10% to 9, and down 10% is to 8.1. And let's look at these expectationally of the uh, terminal prices. We uh, had each of them being equally likely, four different outcomes. Uh, we add them up, uh, divide by the number of cases uh, for the average expected price of $10 like we got before, but this was done with a geometric compounded series, if you will, and we note that the in the past, using arithmetic returns is fine, and in terms of multiple periods, geometric is fine, and to extrapolate to the future, we should use arithmetic and use geometric when looking back across multiple periods of time.